Welcome, everybody, to episode three of Who's Funnier Battle of Weekend Update. So once again, Richard and I challenge each other to see who could be funnier in a remake of SNL's Weekend Update. This week's challenge is a little bit different as we're not matching the number of jokes. Rather, we're going to match the number of minutes each of us has. So we're going to need your help to decide who's funnier. And if you're part of that Goodfellas group, make sure you know that text in the winner is not the way to do it. You got to go into the comments and, you know, write who's the winner. Anyways, let's get right to it. It's Weekend Update. It's been a couple weeks since President Trump claimed to be inspecting the White House underground bunker and not actually hiding in it during the huge protest in D.C. We finally got our hands on his final inspection report, so let's listen in. And you don't get any water. You turn on the faucet, you don't get any water. They take a shower and water comes dripping out. It's dripping out, very quietly dripping out. People are flushing toilets 10 times, 15 times, as opposed to once. Ah, so the man likes flushing the toilet. A limited edition Baby Lives Matter infant onesie is being sold on, you guessed it, DonaldTrump.com. You know, I can't think of any parent who would actually buy this for their precious infant. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There is one baby I'd totally buy this for. <laughs> 60-year-old Anthony Brennan III, the angry cyclist who forcibly grabbed George Floyd flyers from a teenage female was quickly identified by the residents of Bethesda. You see, everybody knew him as Wimbitch because Brennan normally rides with a small boombox blaring Christopher Cross's Ride Like the Wind on a loop. After being showered with cries of loser and you suck for miles, Brennan normally stops at the scene where he confronted the teenagers, amped up from that Christopher Cross music to shadow box and shin kick trees. The thing is, I don't understand why the anger. Christopher Cross is so mellow. And I got such a long way to go to make it to the border of Mexico. There it is. Joe Biden's campaign team was spending millions of dollars of creating unique ads for every demographic in this year's election. But after Donald Trump took the awkward photo in front of the church during the protest, Biden's campaign team celebrated and say they have a simple ad for every demographic. The ad simply reads, not Trump. NASCAR has banned the Confederate flag. This days after Bubba Wallace, the only black driver amongst NASCAR's elite, spoke out against it. Wallace may have pushed too hard though, as NASCAR also banned country music, chewing tobacco, Southern comfort, snaggle teeth, and yes, even guys named Bubba. You have a NASCAR joke? So do I. NASCAR's lone African-American driver, Bubba Wallace, successfully persuaded the auto racing company to ban the Confederate flag from all their events in a move to become more inclusive. NASCAR made the decision after realizing they had more black drivers than black fans. Recently, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi and Senator Chuck Schumer wore kente cloth during a kneeling ceremony in Capitol Hill. Comedian and director Jordan Peele tweeted this image from his movie Get Out, in which the main villains, an older white couple, also wore kente cloth. Peele's characters would steal black bodies and put their minds into them. But why would Schumer and Pelosi want new bodies? Oh, you have a Nancy Pelosi joke? So do I. On Monday, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi kneeled for 8 minutes and 46 seconds in solidarity with the protesters. However, it took the 80-year-old Pelosi eight minutes and 56 seconds to stand back up. After seeing Pelosi's moment of silence, Joe Biden was completely moved. He said he wanted to announce his pick for the vice president nomination immediately. And he did confirm it will be a black woman. That was until his advisor said, just because Pelosi's wearing kente cloth does not mean she's African-American. In an Arizona convenience store, a 61-year-old Karen ordered an attendant to serve her before another female customer because she was white and the female was not. The minority female then proceeded to slap the Karen when she attempted to push her out of the store. This Karen though, took the hard slap in stride, exhibiting a strong chin and good footwork. You see, this Karen is a decorated MMA fighter. When asked why she didn't defend herself, she said, 
I only fight under contract, and I only fight in the octagon. Yes, it's me, Tamara the Barbarian Harrion. Starbucks is closing 400 stores in North America and a shift away from the cafe model toward a pickup only business model due to consumer behavior that changed during the pandemic. Starbucks also announced it's opening up 300 new stores completely influenced by the riots. Each store will have small slits for windows, no glass, and it's completely covered in bulletproof steel. Amid the backlash, Starbucks has reversed course and decided to allow its baristas to wear Black Lives Matter attire and accessories. Although the move indirectly helps baristas make more money because you don't want to be caught not contributing to the tip jar. A few days ago, Minneapolis Mayor Jacob Fry was booed by a large crowd who began chanting, Go home, Jacob, go home. Many believe the humiliated Fry was booed because he refused to defund the Minneapolis Police Department. The actual reason for the furious crowd can be seen in this video. I would have been livid. Many people applauded Jeff Bezos when he made it clear that his company, Amazon.com, fully supports Black Lives Matter and is committed to removing all Confederate flag branded products from being purchased on their website. Although you can still buy a silver plated swastika pendant. Duck Dynasty star and Louisiana resident, Willie Robertson is not happy with recent statements made by Drew Brees. I now have a new favorite quarterback, said Robertson, and he quickly groomed himself to look like the Miami Dolphins, Ryan Fitzpatrick. It's a Ted Ringer. After 24 seasons, The Bachelor franchise has just announced its first black bachelor. The show's producers are taking extra precautions to make sure there's no racism depicted on the show. So don't even think about applying if your name's Karen. Is the comic book Joker real? Rumors are spreading about an underground group headed by a Joker-like figure that is obsessed with political correctness. This group is coercing name changes from bands which they deem to have offensive names. The threat is simple. If you're a band member or if you own the rights to the music, change the name or have your life turned into Seattle. Lady Antebellum was the first group to fall prey as Antebellum normally refers to times before the Civil War. The band is now called Lady A, and they said, and I quote, we didn't think we would ever get caught. Also on the Joker's list, Spandau Ballet, New Order, Steely Dan, Bare Naked Ladies, The Black Crows, The Little River Band, Alabama, and Elvis Presley. Cops, the long-running reality show that glorified police is being canceled after 33 seasons. Yeah. The show's producers were sad to cancel the show, but are happy to announce a new spin-off series called Riots. In light of all the protests against systematic racism in the United States, J.K. Rowling, creator of Harry Potter, is under fire for making transphobic comments against trans women, saying trans women are not real women. After looking at the millions of dollars earned by the Harry Potter franchise, Warner Brothers responded by saying, all lives matter, but let's just focus on black lives right now. This is what Tony Montana thinks about the controversial topic of defunding police departments. Hey, it's complicated, okay? Because for one, business is good, right? In cities like Minneapolis, Seattle, New York, Chicago, LA, business is good. I like it for that reason, you know? But do I want to live in one of those cities? No way. You gotta be kidding me, man. No way. I need to live in a city where the police are gonna act right away if the Colombians come for me, okay? Miami Dade police, they saved my life. So when someone comes to me and tells me, hey, let's go defund the police, I tell them, no okay, you. How you like that? Over the past few years, it seems like every major sports league had some of their athletes kneel during the national anthem, except for the NHL. I was curious as to why so few NHL players are actually protesting by kneeling 
until I saw this video. Have you tried the hot dogs here? Not all NBA players are excited to return to action with the NBA's proposed bubble plan. It seems like 50% of the players not wanting to come back are saying, now's the time to make changes for social injustice in the United States and not play. The other 50% of the players not wanting to come back just don't want to appear on Shaq and the Fool when they're left hanging. Recently, Mike Tyson was offered $20 million to come out of retirement and box again. $20 million. Although if he accepts the money in boxes again, we'll definitely get to find out who he's been intimate with for the last 15 years. Many are wondering why Major League Baseball is having such a tough time figuring out a way to start their season. It seems many of the league's star batters are complaining and saying the pitchers have an unfair advantage due to the pandemic. They say, imagine stepping to the batter's box, looking up at the pitcher, grabbing his crotch and spitting nonstop. Ugh. Ugh. It's like watching a pitcher throw a 90 mile an hour coronavirus straight at your head. For Weekend Update, I'm Richard. And I'm Ryan Guerra. And we hope you have a safe and happy week. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this video and please comment down below who you thought was funnier, Richard or Ryan.